Take him over there. Take him over there. Pick him up. Pick him up. Speed, speed. 49. 50. Okay guys, this is Little Guck here, and we're, today we're talking about my gym equipment. <laughs> okay dad, that's enough. <laughs> Alright, it's late and he's to bed, so let's get this thing started. And it's a video I'm pretty excited to make. Kids gym equipment, or whatever I end up naming it. Now this video isn't about the benefits of kids exercising, or what the proper level of fitness for a child is, because well, I'm not a doctor, at best I'm just another low-end YouTube influencer, but I do have a kid, so that makes me an expert. Or at least that's what my Facebook posts say. Rather than quote CDC guidelines, we can instead all agree that one of the best parts of a home gym is the convenience of it. And a big part of that convenience is that you can work out with your kids around. No random strangers watching them, and no awkward exchanges with your partner about why you're missing four hours every week. So when I'm working out and my son needs to be in here, I thought it was only fair that it's a fun space for him as well. The last thing I want to do is instead of sharing my passion, I make it into something he dreads. Now, to be clear, I don't train him. I don't force him to do anything. I've just attempted to create a space where if he wants to explore and try things out, he's got that ability. But if he just wants to be a kid and play with his dog and toys, well, that's fine as well. But when he shows an interest, I think I've put myself into the best possible position to make a good long-term impression on him regarding the things I value. Now, we've got a lot of items to cover in this one, so let's get into it. Some planning goes a long way, and admittedly, when I planned my home gym, I didn't really think about my son's role in it, and had I, I'm sure we'd have a climbing wall and a few other really cool additions. But that doesn't mean I can't still do my best to find ways to efficiently create a space where we both exist. For me, the ideal is to integrate enough of the equipment I already use, like my gymnastic rings and make them into something he can have fun with as well. Naturally, every kid just wants to swing on these things, so we made sure that he understands what he can and can't do, but they're probably his favorite thing in here, and it's something that we already owned. Age plays a role as well. I didn't go and buy my son a barbell when he was six months old, but that was mostly because I didn't want him out lifting me too early, but it's easy to start small with something like a mat or foam tumblers, for example, so they can explore and figure things out. Then as they age, you saddle them with all your burdens and get them into powerlifting. Or at least maybe get them a bar to play around with. For better or worse, they look up to us and want to do what we do. So when Owen shows an interest, I'll show him a movement and try to make it into something fun. I figure the worst thing I can do is force it, so I never do. And maybe someday I'm lucky enough to stand there cheering as he breaks all my PRs. Until that day, I'll do it this way. This is more for that one person in the comments that calls us out for putting our kids in danger, but make sure you're using your best judgment when planning out your space and working with your kids. Or if that doesn't work, you can reference the Consumer Product Safety Commission standards. Oh, it seems so obvious now. Seriously though, we all know our kids are the most important thing in the gym, so while we're encouraging that natural curiosity and creativity, there's clear boundaries for him when he's in here. And when we're lifting, there's always someone who's not lifting who can be watching him, and when we're not in here, the gym is always locked. We can quote studies about how physical activity improves brain function, and how mastering new skills helps with confidence, but let's be honest, Winnie told me to stop buying stuff from my home gym, so I bought stuff from my kid instead. But honestly, I've done this for a few reasons. As I've mentioned, I want to share my passions with him, but also because the gym has been a great way for me to deal with things. So I want to expose him to everything I can in hopes that when he's older, he can figure out what works for him and what he has fun with. I don't care if it's art camp, the gym, reading, whatever long term is best for him is what I want to support. But I also know that time is precious and I'm never going to get enough with him. So by including him in this, I get a few more moments. Sure, hopefully he gets something out of it, like hard work, discipline, or perseverance, but that's just a bonus. All I really care about is time. In the next version of my home gym, I hope to make it a better space for my son, which is my convenient excuse to Winnie as to why it takes up three times the space. So let's quickly talk about some of the items we specifically bought 
just for him. We have a rogue oh so mini bar for him to mess around with. It's a pretty low risk investment and honestly, I'll gladly spend $125 on my kid before I do on myself. So it didn't take much to talk myself into it. It's 48 inches long with an anodized finish so it will wear away some. It's got a 3.75 inch loadable sleeve and a 22.2 millimeter shaft diameter. It weighs five pounds with a 50 pound weight capacity, has light knurling and no center knurl. It has one bushing in each sleeve, so it spins pretty decent, and it's made in America. They also have a technique bar that's a bit fancier with a needle bearing in each sleeve. And while the specs are similar, they're different enough bars that if you're interested in getting a bar like this, you might wanna take a little bit of time to look into which one you might want. But honestly, for most people, as a starter bar, I'd probably just start with that Oso bar. Now, there's other companies that make these like Fringe, but for the price, you really can't go wrong with that rogue American-made bar. I wanted a way for my son to safely learn the movement without me having to worry so much about the equipment, him, and the plates, and since he'd be getting his own bumpers, because I really don't use 10 pound bumpers, I wanted them to be the coolest thing out there. As you probably know from watching my channel, Fringe makes some of the best bumpers in the industry, so no worries about durability here. They also have pizza bumpers as well, which are actually urethane based, so they're even more durable. We have some five pound technique plates from Fringe Sport for him as well. Not that you need specialized plates, but I wanted light non-iron based plates that I feel comfortable that neither him nor the plates could damage each other. Other. These allow him to lift at the proper height, even if he's not the proper height, and I have no worries about him or them being damaged as he lifts with them, or more likely puts them on his barbell and pretends they're a truck axle. With him in here, it was an easy choice to get him a mat to play on. This one is four foot by six foot by two inches and easily folds all the way. I do wish we had gotten a bigger one for him, but the good ones aren't the cheapest thing out there, though the doctor bill would be much more expensive. We never use our York Legacy milled plates, they just kind of sit there, that is, until my son wants a small plate to play with, they're the ones we give him. So I thought we'd kind of jazz them up a little bit and put these plate snacks vinyl decals on them to make them more interesting and add some personality to the gym. Then I went a little crazy and bought like 10 pairs and stickers for the end caps of his barbell. So yeah. These stick really well and add some character to stuff that never had any and seem to be pretty durable so far. You can also check out the links in the description for our first ever coupon code. Now let's talk quickly about trampolines, which are easy to justify because they build core strength and help with balance or something. But really this video is about buying stuff for yourself under the guise it's for your kids. And who doesn't want a jumping trampoline? My biggest regret is not buying him that Jimnick Roadie bounce horse. When he was little, we used to go to the bounce house every weekend and well, picture me, Winnie and him, racing around on these things as the parents and probably all the kids looked at us like we were nuts. They're rated at 100 pounds, but that never stopped us or at least nobody working there did. Well, that is unless a little baby came over and wanted to use it and then we had to give it up. But I did just notice they make a big chungus version that's rated at 300 pounds. So I better start seeing some of my big powerlifting subs and followers on this thing. Just tag us on our Instagram. Now I can't possibly cover all of the options you can incorporate in your home gym for your kid, but here's a few more super quickly. Exercise balls, a climbing wall, kids medicine balls, a jump rope, and kids pull up bars. And this goes on. Help, I <laughs> like, Comment and subscribe to help us grow. <laughs> help us grow. Ho hope you like the video. Bye! <laughs>